Hi everyone. So in this episode, I promised that we'd get to stems and kappa that end in kappa and ta for these third declension nouns. And, and the, the words that we're going to be working with there are kerux and soma. This is a neuter, soma, somatos, or somatos, and, and then that's a ta. And then kerux uh, is going to be masculine, but, but we'll get to all of that in a second. First off, I think it's going to be important for us to review those endings for all third declension nouns, uh, just to go over them quickly so that we kind of remember what is going on. It's going to explain when we get to kerux and somatos where we go. So we have nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, vocative in the singular, and then again in the plural, ng dav. So singular, plural, and then we remember we only had two different columns to worry about. Masculine and feminine become combined, and then we have neuter over here. So the nominative could end in either sigma or nothing for masculine or feminine, definitely nothing for neuter. Uh, the genitive for both ended in os, as the dative in both ended it with a short iota, e. The accusative was a short alpha for the masculine and feminine, but then, of course, because it's neuter, the accusative and vocative equal the nominative, and then our, in the masculine, the vocative also equals the, uh, the nominative. So we can draw a kind of quick connection here. These are going to be identical, a little equal sign there. All right, so getting back to... Uh, I'm going to have a different font color, but that's fine. Uh, let's go into the masculine, feminine, plural nominative, an S. It's going to be a short alpha in the neuter. Own, as you remember, for both genitive of the masculine and feminine sort and the neuter, neuter sort in the plural. Then we're going to have the sin, short iota, sin. And that nu is a... Um, movable new, so it may or may not be there. And then we're going to have a short alpha sigma plural. Um, bad old habits die hard. That's a short alpha. And then it's going to be as the nominative in the neuter. And then vocative also as the nominative in the masculine and feminine and the neuter. Again, same rule that we just had up here. Nominative and vocative is the same. Nominative accusative and vocative is the same. When it comes to neuter. So, so let's now tackle our first, what's going to be our masculine stem. So we're going to be working with this column, and this is going to be ha kerux. And this means uh, herald. So what we're going to find out is, well, you say, I want a stem that ends in kappa. Where's this kappa, Professor Duncan? Well, well let's, let's talk about that. So our nominative, let's, let's do just to make things bigger and clearer, just the singular for right now. So we're focusing, kind of zooming in on this section of the chart. Well, the truth is that this was, this is the stem, keruk. And then we're going to have to add this sigma ending that's typical of some sorts of the nominative, masculine, or feminine third declension nouns. So what we have is keruks here, an accent here, but of course, this doesn't happen in Greek. When you get kappa plus sigma, as we learned at the end of last lesson, this becomes the xi. So this explains what we have here. We really do have a stem that ends in kappa, but we're just only seeing the, uh, the xi here. This becomes more clear in the genitive where we have that omicron sigma ending attached, and we can actually see the stem here. So what's going to be useful when you're coming into contact with these third declension nouns is you really need to look at the genitive singular. As in Latin, uh, the genitive singular tells you a whole lot about the actual formation of the noun. You're not just looking at the dictionary entry because a lot of weird things can happen in this nominative. This omicron sigma means that the stem, the stem consonant that it ends with it's going to remain very clear and you're going to be able to detect what's going on. So note that this circumflex, because it was on the, the penultimate uh, syllable, 
it had to turn into an acute because it's now moved back to position three on the antepenal and you can't have a circumflex there. So a little bit of accentual changes, but nothing too complicated. And now we can go into the uh, dative singular which has a short iota, again, that allows the accent to go all the way back. Um, and then we're going to have another short here with a short alpha, keruka. And then finally, the vocative is going to be equal to the nominative, so we go back to that circumflex, k rooks. So you see that our endings were exactly as they said they would be here. Sigma, omicron sigma, short iota, short alpha, and then sigma, you know, just identical to the nominative. This is what's going on. It's not too tricky, um, but because that kappa sigma turns into a xi, this, this could throw you off. So let's erase this and then now move into the plural. So again, hall k rooks. Now we're going to be talking about the heralds in the plural, and I'll find a nice kind of green for this. So again, ng dav. And we're going to be working in this thing. So this area now, the plural, masculine, feminine still. So again, we could just write out five times here our stem, because that's going to be staying constant, mostly. <laughs> we can fix the little things that we need to when we get there. So k rook, lots of times. And now let's just add those endings. So we can add an epsilon sigma here, again that short, sending the accent back to the antipenal. k rook s, good, the heralds. You could put a article there. Of the heralds, tone, k rook on. Now, there's nothing that's naturally going to, or strangely going to pull this accent forward, but this is long, meaning that this accent has to fall on the penult, not the anti penult. Now, dative, we're going to get sin. But again, we're running into this problem where we have a kappa followed immediately by a sigma. Greek doesn't do that. It's going to substitute out for the xi. So what we now have is keruxi slash sin. That's a moot. Uh, a new movable. So let me kind of rewrite that. Keruksen. Uh, could just be keruksi. It depends if this was at the end of the sentence, we'd have that period and we'd have a new, or maybe if it's followed by a word that begins with a vowel, but, but keruksi, keruksen. And then in the accusative, alpha sigma, but again, we need to know that that short alpha, which allows the accent to go back to the anti penal. If this were a feminine or first declension uh, and that were long, we couldn't have this going on. But let's not talk about alternative realities. Let's talk about what we're working on. And then vocative is equal to the nominative. So kerukas, so kerukas, kerukon, keruksi, kerukas, kerukas. Good. That's heralds in both singular and plural. Now let's talk about the neuter option. And this is the one that ends in T, soma. Again, you're going to say, Professor Duncan, that doesn't sound like a T to me, but again, all will be explained. So let's take it one number at a time. Now we're focusing here. Neuter singular. So let's just go ahead and skip to the genitive, which is going to end with this ta omicron sigma. So this is a stem that ends in ta, and then we have the neuter genitive singular omicron sigma ending. The accent on soma wants to fall on the omega. Now it's the anti penult so it has to be an acute accent, just like that, somatos. Well, let's take this into the nominative then and just write out our stem. Somat. Good. And then we'd want to make that a circumflex accent because that's a short alpha. Well, that's great, but how many of you so far in your study of Greek have seen a word that ends in ta? Greek hates this. Greek can't have this. It doesn't want so mad. It is, no, that, that sounds bad. This T just drops out. So what we actually have for the nominative is not just kind of nothing. It's actually nothing and then a reduction. We lose that ta. So again, we need to look to the genitive singular. Let me underline this in this kind of hard to see purple. Because right here, that's where we find out that the uh, T actually exists. And of course, we'll see it in these other cases. But this Omicron Sigma ending is very uh, unpretentious, unpresumptuous. It doesn't change things. So if you can just 
block off that Omicron Sigma, you're always going to be able to find the stem, somat, which wasn't really clear from just looking at the nominative. But okay, we can keep on going through. This will be easy. Somati, or somati, short iota, accent falls again on the, the omega, and then nothing changes here accentual-wise. It doesn't need to go in uh, to a circumflex because it's not on the penal, and that's not a short ultima as we have in soma. But now when we get to the accusative and vocative, we know that those in, in the neuter have to look exactly like the nominative, so we're just going to have soma twice, circumflex because the alpha is short. Good. And, and note that this alpha is not an ending. We're going to have see some endings here in alpha. This is just part of the stem, and that T used to be there. That tall has just fallen off. So really the stem, all of this is just somat, but that T can't stand up on its own in Greek at the end of a word. It gets dropped, and we just have soma. So as so often in Greek, there's a reason behind everything. That reason can be can look anything but clear from looking at the words as they appear. So finally, our last quadrant, neuter plural. So we're going to be going through bodies at this point. So ngdav, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, vocative, and then remembering that our stem is somat, but that's not really a functional stem. And then we'll have the accent on the omega, but that might not always be an acute, but that's what we're following along with. So now, we're just going to follow our, our little algorithm here, plugging these endings onto what we have as our stem. So first, somata. And that needs to be acute because it's on the anti penult. Somatone. Again, long final means the accent has to go on the penult, so somatone. Now we're going to get again to this kind of trick where we have a ta plus a sigma iota, and maybe a new. So we looked over, what do we do with uh, dentals when we have a T plus a ta plus a sigma? Well, in this case, the dental drops out, and we just keep that sigma, that uh, sibilant. So we're just going to have somasi. And then again, this is a short iota, so really we're going to have somasi. Two or four, the bodies. Good, so we've lost that ta again. If you were to look, you really need to look at the genitive singular to see the stem because you're not going to find it in the dative plural. You, you don't know. That could have been a delta that dropped out. could have been a lot of things. So genitive singular is where it's at. Now for the accusative, again, we have it easy in the neuter. It's just going to look like the nominative and same with the vocative. Somata in each case. So we find... Kind of, I, I can't redraw everything that we've missed, but if we go back and look at the chart, everything was pretty easy, but when we had these stems that began with sigma, strange things happened. This is why at the end of the last episode, we had to kind of consider what would happen when you combine sigma with other things. The other thing that was of kind of crazy note in this episode was sometimes you're going to have a stem that ends in a consonant, but then that consonant drops out in the nominative uh, where Greek just won't allow that consonant to stand on its own. Somat, Greek wouldn't handle, and then it became soma with this dropping out. Again, this being the um, nominative neuter singular, soma. And that doesn't tell you much about the stem at all. That's why you need to go always to the genitive singular and see somatos, and then you say, ah, somat has to be our stem. And of course, we just have soma here because Greek can't end words in T. So a little bit tricky, but this chart, this is only the first type. You know, we're only looking at two different types of stems here, stems that end in kappa or stems that end in tau. In the next five chapters or so, we're going to learn more and more different stem types and the different things that happen within them. The one thing that doesn't change is this chart. If you have this memorized, you're going to be home free through home free through at least uh, well, at least chapter ten. <laughs> Might get a little bit tricky after that. So I hope that's helpful, and we'll see you next time.